こんにちは。元気ですか ?Okay, the history of Japan. Now, where do I begin? So, it's been said that the first human in Japan was back in prehistoric times around 3000 BC. And this date is interesting. It's a marker that many other parts of the old world starts their history. It's a great marker in time to see what the rest of the world was doing as well. Anyways, let's not get off topic and let's get going on the history of Japan starting now. There was actually a discovery of these edge ground axes in Japan, dated over 30,000 years ago, that may have been evidence of the first people in Japan. Wait, not the katana? Yeah, an axe. The katana wasn't invented just yet, but it will be. You know it will be, and the Nintendo too. It's true, they actually found something in Okinawa down south in a cave called Yamashita, and other caves called the Ishigaki Islands Shiraho Cave. This was only because they liked digging and finding Pokemons. Sorry, I have to say it. But since Japan was on an island, it could probably be agreed upon that people likely arrived in Japan by sea, on a watercraft of some kind, or even a spaceship, but most likely a boat of some kind, probably. Okay, gotta be a little more serious here. As time went by, people started to name the time periods because that's what people like to do. The first one apparently being the Jomon period, roughly around 13,000 BC to about 1000 BC. Yeah, a whole chunk of time there where we could only guess what happened. But what we know about it was that there were a bunch of hunter-gatherer cultures looking for Pokemon. Sorry, couldn't help myself. But this group later reached a considerable degree of cultural complexity. The name Jomon actually means cord marked and was the first pottery style of the first phases of Jomon culture decorated by cords into the surface of wet clay. Enters the Yayoi period. This is where people came from the Korean peninsula, bringing fundamental transformations to Japan with their K-pop and Samsung. Okay, this is becoming a bad habit. Stop it. But they actually brought over rice cultivation and metallurgy. They also brought bronze and iron weapons and tools initially imported from China and the Korean peninsula gradually came into the Jomo. They also brought weaving and silk production, woodworking methods, glass making technology and new architectural styles. It's still strongly debated among scholars as to what extent their spread accomplished by means of migration. We brought K-pop. Yeah, but we had J-pop to begin with, although not as good as K-pop. Agreed. So basically they are saying that this part of history is up in the air with no real evidence of anything, or was there? But we'll never know, will we? Not that I'm trying to start anything. But one thing was evident was that the population exploded during this time, perhaps with a tenfold rise over the Jomon from 1 to 4 million by the end of the Yayoi period. We like babies. The Yayoi tribes gradually split into a number of kingdoms, and the earliest written work of history to mention Japan what? was from the Chinese. The Book of Han, I mean Han, completed around 82 AD, that states that Japan was referred to as Wa and was divided into 100 kingdoms. Not 99, but 100 kingdoms. And it further mentions with their hand that by 240 AD, one powerful kingdom had gained power over the others. One hand to rule them all. That's not even funny. Wei Zi actually call it the Yamatai, where modern historians continue to debate its location and other aspects of its depiction. Yamatai was also said to have been ruled by a female monarch, Himiko. You don't see that every day. Then the Kofun period started, around the Osaka area. At this time, most of Japan gradually unified under a single kingdom. The symbols of the growing powers of Japan's new leaders showed up with Kofun burial mounds constructed around 250 CE and onwards. See rumors of aliens again, of spaceships, not travel by boats. Look at those things. Many of these keys are massive, 486 meter long keyhole shaped burial mounds that took huge teams of spacemen, I mean laborers, 15 years to complete. So why were they so large? So they can be seen from space. They say that Emperor Nintoku had the tombs built, an alien. But the Kofun were mysteriously filled with numerous Haniwa clay sculptures, often in the shape of warriors, horses, and aliens. Stop saying that, we came from boats, not spaceships. End of story. But at the unified state was Yamato in the Kinai region. The rulers of the Yamato state were the hereditary line of emperors who still actually reign as the world's longest dynasty today. 
Yep, definitely aliens. The rulers of the Yamato extended their power across Japan through military conquest or just plain influence. Follow me and you'll be able to ride in my spaceship. Yatta! China even noticed them and recorded them as the five kings of Wa and brought some of the influences over to Japan. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. But they pretty much looked at Japan as a little developing baby. Here you go, some warm milk for you. Kawaii! Now Japan didn't like that too much, which becomes a problem later. Like a rebellious teenager when you take away their game system, you'll see. I've seen it before. Then came classical Japan, or the Asuka period. This was when Buddhism became a big thing, or it started from here. The Buddhist temple of Horyuji is actually the oldest wooden structure in the world, commissioned by Prince Shotoku. Yup, that's me. What it? Ore, ore, ore. The Shinto religion had already existed, but Buddhism had coexisted with Japan's native Shinto religion. We know what you're trying to do. What do you mean? We're not trying to do anything. There was this Confucian-inspired code of conduct of officials and citizens that started to float around, and Japan responded by offering a tiny bit of an insult to China after opening up a letter with a letter opener, reading it, then saying, The ruler of the land of the rising sun addresses the ruler of the land of the setting sun. After the expression, a whole can of whoop ass came into play. But it could have been made up though. Yeah, we made it up for entertainment purposes. But there are different interpretations that established Nihon or Japan as the official name of the nation. Yeah, you guys should still be called Wa, translated in our dictionary as not an insult at all. But the word Nihon, written in kanji, means Japan in Japanese. But there were a bunch of coup d'etats because of this, and Prince Sotoku was a semi-legendary regent and a politician of the Asuka period. In 645, these guys were overthrown in a coup d'etat launched by this guy and this guy, the founder of the Fujiwara clan. They started this land reform thing based on Confucian ideas and philosophies from China. It nationalized all land in Japan, distributed equally among cultivators, and it created this whole new system of taxation. Of course, by seeing this, China was happy about it. Finally, my baby was are learning. You can wall all you want with death and taxes. That's not even funny. It was to copy China for greater centralization to give power of the imperial court, which was the core of the governmental structure of China. People were sent to China. You go to China, learn my laws. They learned about Chinese writing, politics, art, and religion. So that's why the Japanese uses Chinese characters today, which is kind of cool, but it made it super complicated with kanji, hiragana, and katakana. It just makes it harder to study today. Thanks a lot. Arigatone. But because of all that, these legal reforms created the Retsuo State, a system of Chinese-style centralized government that remained in place for half a millennium. Now we're talking. Now you're babies of China. Then enters the Nara period. 